Father, we worship you tonight. We adore you. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship. We adore you. You are King of glory. You are Lord of lords. You are the I am that I am. Oh, we will bless you forevermore. I welcome you on the Instagram. I welcome you on Facebook. As you join tonight, may you be blessed mightily. Bali Rabu Sata. All the matter. Yeah, all the matter. Pleasing God is all that matters. Pleasing God, worshiping Him. Following His instructions. As He leads, we follow. It's all that matters. Hallelujah. Malika Pusatu Libra Bazinga Yakalaba. All the matter. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. We bless you, mighty Father. We bless you, mighty Father. We adore you, mighty Father. Father, we are grateful. Father, we are grateful. Welcome to Man to Man tonight. You are blessed and highly favored. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship, him. Let's worship the King of Kings. Yeah. Bless him tonight. Bless him. Give him praise. We cannot overpraise him. Let's adore him. Let's adore him. Let's adore him. I welcome you on Instagram. I welcome you on Facebook. For those who are joining live and those that will watch later, you are blessed and highly favored. Maleka Pusata Ligra Baseje Gaya Galaba. You are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome. Barika Pasata Liga Yigra Baba Baba. Maye Kebusutu Libra Baba Baba. Father, we bless your holy name. Oh Lord, we magnify you. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. Oh God. He's all. We make a confession tonight. We worship, worship him tonight. And declare that is all that matters. What we are saying, that is our priority. Scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, every other thing. 
Seek you first. If you're going to seek other things, the number one is seeking the kingdom of God. In other words, yes, you are free to seek other things, but the first thing that you must seek is the king of kings. I welcome you, I welcome you again to man to man in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. May you be blessed um, for those joining. Somebody just saying hi from Netherlands. You are blessed and highly favored. You are going to be blessed tonight in the name of Jesus. So I welcome you um, on Instagram. I welcome you on Facebook. Thank you for joining. I trust God that he will meet with you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. For some time now, can I also ask quickly before I go on, that by the special grace of God, we will be having on Zoom and on Facebook and with a possibility on Instagram, our A Time with Jesus series in May, that's next month, the last Saturday in May, 7 to 8 p 7 to 9 p.m. Um, um, GMT plus one, that's United Kingdom time, um, which by now at this moment in time is the same time in Nigeria. Um, and every other country, of course, can take their cue from there. 7 to 9 p.m., 29th of May, by the grace of God. We shall be just follow me on the watch out on this, uh, my respective platforms for more details. Can I tell you the, the theme for that? Um, edition of a Time with Jesus series is as for me and my house. Hallelujah to Jesus. As for me and my house. We'll talk more about that as we go along, but next month is our second edition of um, the virtual edition of a Time with Jesus series. We've been doing it, taking from one city to the other, but thank God for the period and the season that we have now. So, by the grace of God, we'll be doing that on Zoom. You can join on Facebook. The link on Zoom will be uh, published some few minutes to the time on that day. Let's worship God together. Yes, even though this is about men, it's Jesus' men and intercessors, I dare also say that we have experienced a lot of women joining, a lot of women giving us feedbacks, uh, a lot of women, women inviting their men to join. We appreciate you, women. We, we ask you to keep, um, um, be there with us. And can I, I mean, like, like I always say, the principles of life are basically the same. You just need to apply it to uh, whichever applies to you. The principle of success, for example, is the same. So if you are into different businesses, the same principles apply. The application may just differ uh, as, as it were. So please remember um, the last Saturday in May, by the grace of God, we'll be having our Time with Jesus series. Hallelujah. The virtual edition on Zoom and also on Facebook by the special grace of God. I'm trusting God, of course, that it will also be live on uh, Instagram and YouTube. Hallelujah to Jesus. Again, we continue with our series on the pursuit, the pursuit of purpose. Let me also uh, ask us to please subscribe to my channel on David Kola Okewo, and you also understand that we have that. Uh, that's the same David Kola Okewo on Instagram, on, on, on um, Facebook, and on Twitter. You know, get our messages, get our uh, materials. You will be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our website is www.tricom.org. You will be blessed. Hallelujah. So we have been talking about the pursuit of purpose. We have addressed different areas of it. Um, last Friday, we, we, we rounded off, not as if we finished it as it were, but we rounded off what we, the this, this sub-series that we're talking about the cost, the cost of purpose, the cost of purpose. I remember we, talk, we spent two Fridays to talk about criticism. A lot of people criticize for... Uh, as you pursue purpose, okay? If you missed any of it, please feel free to check this platform or my YouTube channel. Um, you shall be blessed, okay? Today, by the grace of God, we'll talk on a topic in itself that we call exchanged purpose. 
exchanged purpose. In pursuit of purpose, see, one thing you must know is that the devil does not tire. It's not a question of he does it tire easily. No, he doesn't tire at all. Scripture says, even after having a serious encounter with Jesus, and he was roundly defeated, totally, completely defeated, uh, in, um, uh, uh, when, in the wilderness, and the devil tempted him, and yet Jesus Christ came out triumphant, defeating the devil in all areas. In all the three temptations that came, the, Jesus Christ had a, a decisive answer that defeated the cancer of the enemy, that defeated the kingdom of darkness. It wasn't a draw. It wasn't a partial victory. It was a total victory. It was a great victory. It was an awesome victory. And yet, after that, the Bible says, I would have thought that when you are so defeated like that, what you should do is to let your tail be behind your legs and you crawl away. Yes, he might have crawled away, but the Bible says, and the devil left him, meaning the devil left Jesus, for a season. The devil never tires. He never gives, gives up. And you will see in the journey of Jesus' ministry, he still came back. So don't think, thank God for your victory now. The journey of life is in rounds, if you know boxing, round one or wrestling. If you do round one, round two, round three, you might have won round one. If you relax by round two, you can, you can be knocked out. And that is exactly how life is. That's exactly how life is. Yes, you might have had victory yesterday, but if you relax today, you never can say what will happen. That's why the scripture says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Yes, it is good. You began. You started well. But it's not your starting that will give you the victory. It is your ending. Life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You can have a marathon 100 meters and then you have won. No, that's a sprint. A marathon is that's when you go round and round and round <coughs> and some go over and over and, and some can be by the time you start you may even be on the same level as you go on you begin to have each other some may be taking the first position at round two at round five they have gotten to maybe seventh position so scripture talks to us about persevering. It talks to us about long suffering. It talks to us about <coughs> excuse me. Talk to us about not giving up. Bible says that if you faint in this day of adversity, your strength is small. So the devil starts with you from the before you are even born so he tries that you do not get born again he will do everything he will pump excuses into you i'll meet some people that say give, give your life to give your life to christ and the next thing will say there are so many born again that are fake if they are fake you be the original i do not dispute the dispute the fact that there are those who claim to be born again, but they are not. Scripture establishes it. That's not nothing new. It's not, it didn't start at our generation, at our dispensation. No, 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 no. It's there. there if there is no original, there won't be fake. Okay? So that's not an issue. But you prove yourself to be the original. Let, let stand out and say, wow, I've met Christians, but your own is different. So, Rise up to be the original. Don't focus on the people that know oh, there are so many fake. And, and believe you me, you find a lot of people like that who will, because of that, say they are not coming to church. Some will say because they encountered something in church. Maybe they were disappointed by the actions of their pastor. As bad as that is. Mm -hmm. They were disappointed by the actions of their pastor and then they stopped coming to church. I know of situations like that. It's bad that the pastor allowed himself to be like a clog in the wheel of progress. 
Okay, it's bad. But I'm saying that at the end of the day, God will hold you accountable. Some will say because of what he sees around in the body of Christ, then he's not, he's not, he's not interested in being a Christian. You are missing the point. You can rise up to be the good one. You can rise up. If he is the bad example, why don't you rise up to be the good example as to how life sh how it should be? Okay? So, he pumps so many excuses into the hearts of man why they should not follow Jesus. But by the mercy and grace of God, if he loses that round, and the man gives his life to Christ, that is the beginning of another round of battle with the devil. The only time we will have rest is when the Lord takes us home, or Jesus Christ comes, whichever comes first. That's the only time we'll be free from, from, from um, the challenges of life. It could differ at different stages, but the only time you'll be free, you can be free. Scripture says something interesting. It says, um, it says, but uh, joy comes in the morning. Weeping endures to the night. Joy comes in the morning and we rejoice, all right? That's an awesome scripture. That's a wonderful promise of God. But do you remember that there are so many nights and there are so many mornings? After a morning, there's another night. After a morning, there's another night. And morning and night, it will not cease. So today it's a beautiful testimony that you have. It's a gracious, wonderful testimony. Yeah, enjoy it, but don't be deceived. The devil is still by the corner waiting for you to slip up. But we bless God for the mercy and grace of God. We thank God for the He's our enabler. The Holy Spirit is our enabler. As long as we depend on the Holy Spirit, we can never lose the battle. It's not by your power. It's not by your mind, but as long as you, you just rely on the Holy Spirit, don't bother to say you want to, you want to, um, or oh, outpray the devil, because you do not know all his strategies. Okay, you do not know all his strategies, so don't bother to say, "Oh, I'm praying for one million things. Let me cover all the mind one million prayer lists." No, that's why Scripture says we do not know how to pray. The devil had been in this business long before your generation was born. Okay? But, thank God, blessed be God, we have a Lord and Master that teaches us the right prayer to pray. So he comes to you after he has lost the battle of you giving your life to Christ. The next thing he does, I've, I've established in this series... That the next important thing for you as a child of God, after giving your life to Christ, is to know the purpose and the direction of God that God has for you, for your life. Don't assume. Don't finish his sentence for him. The next thing you need to do is to know the direction and purpose, the purpose of God for your life. Hallelujah to Jesus. And that's where he comes up again. He tells you not to pursue purpose. He, he diminishes the importance of purpose. That you can do other things. Don't worry. Then what are you talking about purpose? Whatever my hand finds to do, let me do. That's not uh, what are you talking about. He diminishes the importance of purpose. Okay? If he loses at that level and says, No, I must follow. I must do the work of him that sent me. Night comment that no man walks. I must do what he asked me to do. I know there are options. Let me focus on the mind of God for my life. And you insist. Hmm? And then you say, yeah, now your master said go, I want to pursue purpose. The next thing he does, he tries to exchange your purpose. He tries to exchange, and that's where we're talking about, exchange purpose. There are lots of people who are pursuing the wrong thing. They say they want to pursue purpose, but like they say, life happens. They are still working in the vineyard of God. They are still active, but not everybody can say this is exactly what God asked me to do. A story is told of a man of God that was celebrating I can't remember the exact number of years now, maybe 20 years, 25 years, 
or something like that. He, he, he had a church and he was celebrating like 25 years anniversary or 20 years anniversary. I cannot remember the exact number of years that he was celebrating. Okay, let's just say 20 years of celebrating the, the church anniversary and he was a genuine, genuine man of God, genuine man of God. And he, according to him, as he knelt down in his bedroom, thanking God for a wonderful anniversary and blessing God after about 20 years, that about. And he kneels down to thank God for a wonderful anniversary. He says God just, the Spirit of God came to him and said to him, Son, when are you going to start the assignment that I give to you? Ah, after 20 years that I've been laboring in your vineyard, he says, that's not what I give to you. When are you going to start the assignment that I, after 20 years or thereabouts? So he had been working diligently, but he did not follow the template that God gave to him. If Apostle Paul had, after the encounter on the, on the road to Damascus, had picked up his Bible, I said, with zeal, I said, okay, uh, Brother Peter, show me the way. What should we do? Let's start preaching. You have been there before me. You have um, worked with Jesus. You just tell me. Innocently, genuinely and sincerely, Peter would have directed him to another synagogue and said, okay, continue to pray and preach to the Jews. Maybe he would have done that for 40 years. And then, maybe won a lot of Jews to the kingdom of God. And then, maybe after 40 years, God has said, that's not where I sent you. I sent you to the Gentiles. You must be careful of exchanged purpose. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief comes only. <laughs> the, oh God. I, I, I could see. The thief comes only. The only reason the thief comes is a threefold. Nothing more, nothing less. That's why that only is very crucial. The thief comes only. Only, nothing else. Don't think he has come to be your friend. Don't think that he has come to be merciful to you. Don't think he has come to do another thing. He, the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Let's stay there for a while. Let me explain this three. To steal means... To steal means we know what it, you take something away. Number one, he, the devil is a thief. A thief means someone who takes something that doesn't belong to him. So what he wants to take from you does not belong to him. It belongs to you. I, I don't. I, I'm trying not to digress here too much because this this verse in itself understand. The Bible says there is nothing, every gift comes from the Father of light. Whatever gift that you have belongs to you, given to you by God. The devil did not give you. So ordinarily speaking, he can't take it if you don't allow him. He, in other words, he doesn't have a right over it. The only way he can have access to that which is inside you that is your blessing is if he steals it. He is a thief. The only way is if he steals it. So the only thing he comes to do in your life, I always say that the devil is not a merciful devil. If you had an accident and your leg broke, don't focus on, ah, this devil. Oh, it made me have an accident. Oh, my leg broke. Mm -mm. Look at it from the another angle and say, oh, so that's the worst you can do. You know why? Because I promise you, 
that was, that's the that's the most that the devil could do for you. He wanted to do more. Don't think that he had pity on you. I pray you understand what I'm saying. Don't think he had pity on you and say, oh, let me just break his leg. If you could break your leg, break your arm, remove your eyes, cut your head off, he will do it. It's not it's not out of his mercy that you came out of that accident just with a broken leg. It is out of the graciousness of Jehovah God. We must have that understanding. So whatever happens to you that you think is a tragedy or is a calamity, that is the worst. God drew a line and said, don't cross this. When it comes to my son, Job, don't cross that line. He wanted to do more. God said, no, no, don't touch his, 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 his spirit. Don't touch his life. So all the things that he did, oh, this devil is terrible. This devil is terrible. He wanted to do more. It's God. Always see God in every situation. Always see God in every situation. Always see God. Insist on seeing God in every situation. Make up your mind. Um, a personal friend of mine in the United Kingdom um, suddenly that was his whole office was flooded. That was like a bust bust pipe. So his whole his whole his whole office was flooded. And um, the moment he got there. And everybody said, oh, computers got spoiled, water entered, all kinds of things happened. And he just went there and started worshipping God. He just started worshipping God. And others were looking at him. You see, Yorubas will say, God doesn't allow, so, you know, they will say God doesn't do something. But I would rather put it as this, God doesn't allow something without giving a room for, for you to praise him when you look at that situation, no matter how terrible that situation is. And he stood up and said, listen, what if the water could have sparked um, the, 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 the electricity, things could have happened, and began to analyze how things could have gotten worse. So that it was at this level, it is enough to praise God. Even though the computers got spoiled, they will be they are replaceable. It is a, an effort for you to decide to look at situation and see God in every situation. You don't have money, see God in that situation. You are not where you want to be, see God in that situation. You have been dreaming and praying and fasting for a certain thing. See God in that situation. So, what the devil does is to steal. He may, okay, so in that, let's go back to the issue of purpose. Oh, you want purpose. He wants to steal that purpose away from you. He's a thief. He's not the giver of the purpose. He's not saying, oh, this is my thing. I'm, I'm asking you back. No. So he wants to steal that purpose away. In all kinds, the Bible talks about the wiles of the devil. That means corrupted wisdom, trick of the devil, trick of the devil. He will not come. That's why the Bible says he comes as angel of light. He will come in a trick. He won't just go, hey, I'm the devil. I want to. I mean, even a stupid person, if the devil comes like a devil to you, you don't need anybody to help you cast the devil away. You will go by yourself and say, no, I don't have anything to do, do with you. So in drama, you find the devil being depicted with horns. Yeah, and then Rita said, devil doesn't usually come like that. He will come as angel of light. He will come and present to you a good, a good logical reason. It is on if you get, you understand it. That's when you are able to discern. That's when you are able to say, no, no, no. Okay, that's why the Bible talks about the spirit of discernment. Because if you don't have the spirit of discernment, everything will look okay to you. Okay? If Lot had had the spirit of discernment, even though he saw green grass going on there, we would have said, no, 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 God, what are you saying? This, 
If I had this, this one behind this green, lush, lush, plain field that is Sodom and Gomorrah, I'm not going there. Behind this beautiful woman, beautiful, so beautiful, good thing, good job, excellent. That is a Jezebel. No, this is not the man. No. Behind this man that looks like everything is in place, God has a good job. Goes to church. Ah, this one is fake. You have to have a discerning spirit. The spirit looks seen beyond the physical. So it comes to steal. If he fails in that, he kills the vision. That means he takes the life out of your purpose. It takes, you know, something must have a life. For it to function. So what he does is to kill means to take life out of out of that thing. So a purpose can be there. You can identify the purpose, but nothing is happening. The purpose is dead. This is what God wants me to do, but it's not functioning. It's not alive. Okay? That's number two. It's the purpose you have identified it. The first one is stealing. Take the purpose away from you. The second one is to kill. That means take life out of the purpose. So you look, you wake up in the morning, no, no, no excitement, no enthusiasm, no sense of, you don't want to. I see a lot of people in the purpose, it's like, the reason why they continue in it is because maybe they don't have anything else to do. They don't have anything else to do. Or, well, it's too late for them to go. So they are just going through the motions, going through the motions, no life, no excitement, no enthusiasm to do it. Life has been taken out of the purpose. Then the third one is to destroy. What that means is this. And the simple analogy I want to give you is, is an egg, raw egg. And that's, I'm telling you, that's how fragile your purpose is actually. So when you hold a, an egg in your hand and you close it and someone comes to you wanting to take that egg from you and you say, no, you can't take it. Do you know one of the ways, what you can do? If he presses your hand and squeeze your hand, I, I wish I'd brought the real egg here. I would have just demonstrated it to you, you know? When he presses your hand over that egg, presses it and squeeze, and you think you are protecting it before you know, inside your hand, that raw egg will break. Inside your hand, it's still in your hand. So when they squeeze that hand inside you, that raw egg will break. The next thing you'll be seeing will be the raw egg coming through your fingers down. You still have the egg. You are still holding the egg, but it has been destroyed. You still have the purpose. It's still in your hand, but it has been destroyed. It could be destroyed through scandal. It could be destroyed through a catastrophic error. It's still there, but it has been destroyed. May your purpose not be destroyed. I don't know who you are tonight. I prophesy to you. May your purpose not be destroyed. May your purpose not be stolen. May your purpose not, not the line of your purpose may not be taken out of it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you not May you not lose your purpose, whether by it being stolen, whether by it being killed, or whether by it being destroyed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the Lord goes and says, I have come. Hallelujah. Oh God. See, that's why personally, my doctrine is more to fo focus on Jesus. I want to focus on Jesus than on the devil. That's my doctrine. In everything, I want to focus on Jesus. If I finish this verse here, 
We're talking about John chapter 10, verse 10. It will not have been complete. So, he says, yes, that's what the devil has come to do. But I will not leave you comfortless. Alright? I will not leave you <laughs> in the hands of the devil. Isn't that a gracious promise, people? I pray that that just sinks into your heart. And you see the glorious thing. I spent time talking about what the devil can do, but the bad by himself come. The king of kings and the lord of lords comes. Say, I have come. <laughs> you know, in my place, they say, when, 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 when cat comes, the rat disappears. When light comes, darkness disappears. He's the king. I remember one time, I think on this platform, I was sharing with you, when God gave me an understanding of, you know, where they say, uh, the king of the road. <laughs> you know? And I was I was driving, uh, well, I was going through the countryside of Nigeria. I think it was in February. And we were driving through the countryside. And on the road. I, I just got that understanding of, you know, in Nigeria what they call the king of the road are the trailers. The big trucks. <laughs> it doesn't matter it doesn't matter whether they are the one that legitimately owns the right of way. Okay? It doesn't matter. What, but when they come on the road, every other car moves. <laughs> you find the, sometimes some of these trailers can just overtake. And they face the oncoming vehicle headlong. You just face them headlong. And you begin, you begin to see those cars just drive into the bush why the king of the road had come it doesn't matter whether he's the one that <coughs> excuse me whether he was driving right or not no that's irrelevant the king of the road so it's like that the king of the jungle when the king of the jungle comes a lion every other animal bows the king of the jungle so when they came when they now call God the king of kings, there could be other cause. But when the king of kings come, the other kings must bow. He's the father. He's the, he's, the, he's the master of all principalities and powers. Colossians says it is in all things were made. Without him, nothing was. It's, 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 he's he, he the, he's the all in all. He's the all in all. That's why the Bible says no weapon fashioned. Before that verse, you understand that those weapons were fashioned by God. So he knows the in and out of those, those weapons. That's why he now got to that scripture to say, he wasn't just bragging about it. It's, I, I'm the one that invented it. I know everything about it. So, and I know the areas to put the safety catch and to make this thing not to work. So, it comes to a point I say, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Why? Because I'm the master of all those weapons. I know how to make it. No, this one will not work now. Right? I'm speaking, you can say, let the rain fall. He created the rain. You can say, no, the rain is not falling. He created the rain. Others just came up. He says, he told the Trinity, he said, let us make man. He is the one. The Bible says he, he called things. He said, and it was good. Then it was not a committee meeting of other angels or anything. No. He did it. He knows what to do. The Bible says Jesus Christ, by the word, the earth was created. So he knows what he's saying. Nothing was created out of Jesus. There is no new invention that, oh, Jesus Christ does not know about it. No. So he says... I, what an what 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 an audacity what a what a gracious privilege that we serve this lord and master he says i have come that you may have life not only averagely not only just anyhow and have it to the full i have come to give you abundant life even though this is the plans of the devil he comes only for one thing he does all of that but i have come i 
have come. Jesus is ready. He's, that's why he says, I stand and knock and knock. I'm waiting. Just open the door. I'm ready to come in. I am available. It's just like a waiter. You're at the restaurant. He's waiting for you. Or he's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to say, okay, waiter, this is what I want to do. He says, I'm ready to bless you. That's why scripture says, come on to me, all you that labor. Just come. I'm here for you. Oh, my goodness. I'm here. I'm, all you need is to say, God, Jesus, I need you. Oh, before you finish that sentence. You remember the, the story of the prodigal son? The Bible says, when the father saw him afar off, if it is we human beings, we'll sit down and say, eh, so you have come back. Oh yeah, apologize. Or they will, he will even go and meet some family and say, please come and help me beg my daddy. Oh, come and help me beg. They say, no, no, stay out. Stay out. Let's go and beg him first. Remember that when you are going, we, 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 we begged you not to go out. Ah, your daddy still angry. Is it, 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 it. And the daddy will now say, hey, he has come back now. He now begins to see all kinds of things. Bible says, the moment he saw him afar off, he ran to meet him. That's exactly how Jesus, he's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. All you need is to make the effort. In fact, he's ready to meet you halfway. He's ready to meet you halfway. He's ready to meet you halfway. All, the, all he needs is your intention. Is your readiness, is your willingness. As you make the effort, he's ready to meet you. So he said, I have come to give you life and to give you abundantly. The intention of God is for you to live a full life. In other words, full capacity. Full life. Full capacity. Full life, not to go through life managing, not to go through life just uh, what can we do? That's how life is. People are just suffering. God wants to make your life special, He wants to make it different. So He said, I've come to give you life, life in abundance, full life for you to live it to the full. That's why some people say, You as a prayer, people pray, I say about. Dying empty. So that at the end of the day, you don't say, oh, where, where have the years gone? Some people at an old age, they are living a life of regret. They are living a life of had I known. Oh, I should, if I only have known, I should not have done this. If only I had known. A life of had I known, that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. I've met people before say, ah, I, I wish I had given my life to Christ. Many years before now. Ha! Ah, so, so they will see these young people who are vibrant for Christ. And by this time you are 50, you are 60, you are 70. They, they, that's what scripture talks about. Going into heaven as if going through fire. So all they have is their soul is saved. No crowns, nothing. At least, okay. They, they just, thank God they made heaven. But inside of them, they would have wished that maybe they had been, they, they had, they had um, given their lives to Christ earlier. So God says, I want you to live a full life. Not full life as in, as in vanity. Not full life as in, oh, you remember one that we spent, we sent that, we, um, we shared that scripture that talks about people saying they want to live merry. They don't, no, no, no. God said, I'm going to take this life away from you. That's not what God is saying about you living a full life. God said, totally committing yourself to him. Let him be your priority. Guiding, focusing on, your, on God. Focusing on God. Let the first thing you will think about doing is to please God in all that you do. You know, I was reading a write-up this morning about... Um, a very rich man who says that he understood the 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 meaning of happiness he wasn't talking about joy really but he was talking about happiness he says he thought that happiness meant for him to get loads of money but he said he got the money but he didn't feel he wasn't really happy so if men went to the next stage you know how he put it is that 
he has gone through the, is it the three or the four stages of happiness and he knows what happiness means so he said the first one is told okay let me get money and all that he got the money and yet number two he said he wanted to be um maybe a supply of something like that he he got it and yet he felt he didn't it wasn't fulfilled he got to the third point which was to acquire valuable things valuable real things he got to that point he acquired the most valuable of things he said he didn't he didn't, he didn't feel any happiness he said but the third one was when a friend of his asked him asked him to to buy hundred wheelchairs for some cripples and he got he bought them and then the friend said let's go please i need you to to be the one to give to give to those cripples give them the 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 the, the, the wheelchairs yourself so okay i'm gonna go with you so this rich man a billionaire actually went with the friend to distribute the um the wheelchairs to those people it says when they were going one of the boys held on to his leg he wanted to but the boy held on to his leg and then he turned to the boy and said do you need any other thing what he thought that the boy wanted to make a request an additional request so he turned to the boy and said is there another thing you need just tell me and the boy says I just want to see you and memorize your face so that when I get to heaven, I will thank you again. He says, I just want to check and, and stamp your face into my memory so that when I get to heaven, I will thank you again. Wow. He says, the joy, the fulfillment he felt that moment he has never felt it in his life his billions did not give him that fulfillment the value the valuable things he got did not give him his popularity did not give him that fulfillment but that statement that the boy made he says from that moment he it, it changed his outlook to life he, he says he changed his outlook to life. Listen to me. Pursuing purpose is goes beyond monetary gains and monetary values. If you think pursuing purpose it's about the money you get, you will find yourself exchanging your purpose. I've just been able to touch the introduction of that. I thought we were going to just finish it today. I, I've just been able to touch the introduction of it. You see, it's, it's, it's go, you can't monetize purpose. You can't monetize purpose. You can't, you can't measure fulfillment in monetary terms. Those who allow their purposes to be exchanged are those who monetized purpose. We're going to get into that. All right? For example, for example, those who, you know, when they tell you one of the ways they exchange purpose to you, they, when, they start, when they look at what you are pursuing, they say, this one does not have any prospect. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't have any prospect. Why don't you do this one? This one, <laughs> this one will give you more money. This one will do this. This one will do that. So, people would rather pursue the glamorous purpose than any other thing. Because the truth of the matter is that most of the times, genuine purposes at the initial time don't look glamorous. Don't look promising. Even if you have spent time in the presence of God and you have received so many promises of God, what you see around you will not be promising. What you see around you, especially because these things, the promise of God will not happen immediately. Some will take years, but he has spoken. So it, it depends on you to hold on to him and say, God, I hold on to you, I believe you. 
God, I trust you. God, I love you. You have said it, even though what I'm seeing around does not look as if it's going to come to pass. I, I can't see, I can't even see it coming to pass. Oh God. 24 hours is too much for God. It's too much for God to turn your You know, one of the things I, keep, I said recently was the fact that, you know, even though uh, Joseph was expecting to be helped by the butler and the, all of them, not in, in a million years would he have thought maybe the best would have been for him to be released from prison ahead of the number of years that he was given. Maybe they would even return him back. If they are returning back to Israel, or to, to his father, he would have been happy. In fact, they would have given testimony. Hey, Kebosan. They would have given testimony. Hey, my daughter, my child is dead. He's not alive. They would have given testimony in church. If he had been returned to Potiphar, I said, ah, Potiphar. And Potiphar says, oh, Joseph, sorry. Um, it was a mistake. Uh, he would have given testimony. God would still have been good. He would still have said, oh, this is amazing. This is what God did. Oh, this is beautiful. This is great. But, not in a million years would he have thought that within the space of 24 hours, he will translate from bring a prisoner, a man with just a number, no name. They don't call you by your name in prison. And the moment you don't have a name in the spiritual, you don't have identity. So they call you prisoner 1078. You don't have a name. The first thing they take away from you in the prison is your dignity. The first thing they take away from you in the prison is your identity. And what doesn't have a name is not in the process of being transformed. Because you see, what, when God wants to do a miracle, see, listen, for anything to begin to have any resemblance of progress, a name must be given to it. So when the virus came, they didn't have a name for what they have now. The first thing they had to do was to give it name, COVID. When God created the animals and everything, the next thing he had to do was to give, why did God allow the, the animals to just be roaming? And we are describing that, you know the one with the horn? No, he brought the animals to Adam and said, whatever you name it. Name is very crucial. And that's why when you are in prison, those who do deliverance, the next level, what's your name? So when you are in prison, they remove that name. You become prisoner, this, 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 number. So from a, a prisoner that has no identity, from a prisoner that has no name, from a prisoner that's dignity has been removed, Within 24 hours, from a prisoner became a prime minister. Not in his wildest dreams would he have thought that change would come. Everybody that has that had entered into their destiny, they can always look back and say, There are many people by now when they tell you their stories, you think they're exaggerating. When they tell you what they have gone through in life. You do. Uh, you are exaggerating, George. You're just making it look good. No, you didn't go through that. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's maybe you just trust them that you want to just believe what they say, because at that point where you make your permit to pursue purpose, it's as if what good. He says, "What Matthias said, what good can come out of Nazareth? What good?" What good can come out of Nazareth? You see, one of the things that helped David was that he never forget his source. He never, he never. When Mika told him and said, why are you, why are you dancing like this? He said, eh, me. Me. I know where I'm coming from. I know that I didn't deserve the place that, that I got to. It was God that picked me. I know that when my brothers were more qualified for me, I was in the wilderness. When my brothers were doing advert and saying, oh yeah, pick me, pick me. I was not even there to present my own contract papers. I was not even there to present my, my, myself. 
or I'm not even there to preach to say, see, see me, I'm also good. I can play. When, oh, good. When after he's a, when, when they needed something, somebody in, 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 in the palace, he was not there to present his credentials and qualifications. People were speaking on his behalf. I declare to you tonight. Where you are not able to defend yourself, heaven will defend you. Where you are not able to present yourself, heaven will favor you. On that contract, in that place, where they are speaking and discussing against you or about you, Jehovah himself will appear like a mighty man of war. The Bible says, three Hebrew boys were put in the, in the field furnace. The man said, is it not three people that we put there? How come that I'm seeing for that the fourth one it's like the Son of Man. I declare to you, Jehovah himself will rise up for you. Don't give up. Don't give up. It may not be like that. I don't know how long you have been on it. But don't give up. At no time was to exchange your purpose. At no time was to allow your purpose to be exchanged. Initially, it may not appear to be so. Initially, it may not appear to be so, but I declare to you. Just tarry a while. Don't give up. Don't give up. Hold on. Why? Because your Redeemer liveth. He says not a jot out of his word will come back to him void. When he says it, he will accomplish it. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. We have just been able to touch the introductory part of the exchange purpose. And I feel in my spirit that we just need to spend more time on this. Because a lot of people have allowed their purposes to be exchanged. A lot of people have allowed their purposes to be exchanged. So we're going to continue on this next Friday by the grace of God. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. The Lord God Almighty will open your eyes and you begin to check. Have I exchanged or allowed... My purpose to be exchanged. May the Lord bless you and keep you. I want to ask you every Tuesday on Zoom and on Facebook, we have 9 to 9 30 prayer time, Jesus' men prayer meeting. Join us. We thank God for the testimonies we've been having.